Hello everybody and welcome to the very last week of our popular culture class. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the class. I thought it was fun. Um, it was my first time doing an online class so I hope it went well um, for the most part. Uh, and I hope you feel like you learned something or at least learned to think critically about the popular culture we consume every day. Uh, so in this last week we are going to talk about the show, How I Met Your Mother. Um, this show I chose because it is the epitome of kind of popular American television culture. It is the epitome of a sitcom. Um, it is everything that is sort of the opposite of The Office. Like, The Office did everything so differently, you know, from How I Met Your Mother, which is a very, very traditional sitcom. And actually, you know, we've been talking a lot about racism and sexism and heteronormativity throughout the course of our class. And How I Met Your Mother is actually the worst offender um, of all of those things, uh, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, first of all, the entire premise of How I Met Your Mother is based on a heteronormative, monogamous, American dream, right? The typical American dream is you meet someone, you settle down, and you have a family, right? So the whole premise of the show is this father recollecting, you know, how he meets the mother of his children, and that this is obviously the most significant um, event of his life because that is what begins or maybe even ends that pursuing of the American dream, which is that traditional family, okay? Um, it is also from the perspective of a white, male, educated, privileged character, okay? Ted Mosby, right? And so Ted is white, um, he's a man. He is geeky, but he's smart. He's attractive. He's fun-loving. Um, he has this great apartment in New York. He has a great job as an architect, even if throughout the, the series it kind of goes back and forth about what he's doing, right? He is sort of our... He's almost a reincarnation of, you know, some of the famous Friends characters, right? You know, a successful New York bachelor just looking for the right kind of girl. And the show is really centered around him and his needs. Um, Lillian Marshall are very typical, right? They're that typical couple that does everything together. They, you know, they can't live without one another. And they actually only seem to function in accordance with each other or we all I feel that we see more of Marshall's life than we see of Lily's and that perhaps Lily only exists in compliments to Marshall meaning that her only role is to be the girlfriend of Marshall she herself doesn't really exist as a separate entity now I think as the show goes on I mean the show lasts for nine years right I mean it really got a long haul and it, it that was actually pretty significant because there haven't been a lot of shows um, that have lasted that long anymore and that used to be kind of the norm like shows used to be on for nine or ten years you know like Frasier like Friends um, like Full House uh, like Family Matters okay they used to be on for a long time and now shows barely make it you know three or four seasons without getting canceled so um, How I Met Your Mother has really sort of you know, it captured the American audience um, and managed to be on for nine years. So I think we do, as the series progresses, see more of Lily as an individual, but mainly she exists because of Marshall. Um, and Marshall is another typical, we have a typical white male uh, law degree, ends up in a typical, you know, law firm, um, and again, Money never really seems to be an issue for Marshall either. Then we get to Barney, and Barney is actually a really fascinating character um, for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, um, 
Barney is played by Neil Patrick Harris, and that is a fascinating choice because most of you probably know that Neil Patrick Harris is a wildly openly gay man who has, you know, adoptive children, he has um, a monogamous partner, and he's very openly gay in the public, um, does a lot of gay pride uh, events, um, you know, stands up for, uh, you know, homosexual rights in, in political aspects, and we have him playing the ultimate womanizer. And that's a really interesting choice because you know, we all know that Neil Patrick Harris is gay. So the audience is already sort of in on that joke that we have this womanizer who we know in real life is is gay. Um, but, you know, what if the audience doesn't know he's gay? Does he, he does a pretty convincing job of being this terrible womanizing person. And, you know, Barney is so terrible because you know, for Barney, women simply exist, exist for sex and nothing else, right? That is all, you know, that, that they have a purpose for. And what makes the show probably the most sexist show I've ever seen is that uh, while Barney is the main perpetrator of that, Marshall and Ted have no problem joining in. Uh, they, they tend to congratulate Barney on his conquest, although sometimes they roll their eyes they never seem to say, hey, you know what, you're actually kind of disgusting. They never say that. Lily never says that. Robin never says that. Um, it's just sort of accepted that this is how Barney is and that it's okay for him to treat women as sexual objects. And often he kind of convinces Ted and Marshall to also treat women as sexual objects. Um, so the show is really wildly sexist. Um, Robin is the final character. Again, much like Lily, Robin only exists in her relation to Ted. We wouldn't even have Robin as a character if Ted hadn't pursued her um, romantically and sexually. And she really only exists in relation to her interaction with the men in the show. And, you know, throughout, throughout the series, not so much in this first season, but throughout the series, she gets passed back and forth. Um, between Ted and between Barney as a sexual object, um, and it's it's very, very not good. <laughs> like it's again, the women only exist in relation um, to the men, and you know that's pretty bad. Um, you know, um, Robin also is sort of this prize. Um, Ted and Barney are constantly trying to win her, and women in general seem to be a sort of prize that needs to be sought, that needs to be won. Hence the entire premise of the show is Ted seeking, you know, a woman. Now, a lot of you might say, okay, but that's totally relatable. You know, Ted wants to find a woman that he loves, you know, that he wants to settle down with and marry and have children and, and what's so terrible about that. You know, how is that any different, you know, from Jim and Pam uh, in the office? And and you're not wrong, I think, that, you know, that that is, you know, a typical uh, American dream that is pursued and there is not necessarily anything inherently wrong with it except that Women in How I Met Your Mother are are portrayed as sexual objects that are prizes to be won. They are not really seen as people. And we can see uh, through the recycling of all the women that Barney pursues for one night stands and also all the women that Ted goes through. You know, it's like, hey, have you met Ted? And it's, you know, it's a constant just recycling, you know, going through all of these women as objects. So the show, when we look at shows like The Office um, and Family Guy, you know, and even David Sedaris that we read and Saturday Night Live and even Hyperbole and Half, like this show is the number one worst offender and the most sexist and most racist show that we have looked at throughout the course of our class. And you might be like, but it's just such a, you know, like a normal cheesy sitcom. Families watch this. But the difference is the sexism in 
the office and the racism in the office and also in Sedaris and also even in Family Guy. It is intentional and we're supposed to gasp at it. We're supposed to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe Michael Scott said that, right? Or, oh my gosh, I can't believe Family Guy did that. We're supposed to be sort of shocked by the sexism and racism in those shows. Whereas in How I Met Your Mother, we're not supposed to be shocked and those displays of sexism and racism are seen as normal. They are not seen as shocking. You know, maybe Barney is is abnormal in his sexual conquest, but in a way, those conquests are celebrated and laughed at, which makes them acceptable. So that's the biggest problem with How I Met Your Mother, is that the sexism and racism is 100% acceptable, and we see it as acceptable, and we consume it as acceptable. Whereas in The Office, and The Family, and in Family Guy, and in David Sedaris, those things are pointed out as, you know, they're like alarm bells. Like, I can't believe they did that. That's so awful. I can't believe they said that. But when you watch How I Met Your Mother, the, it's a subtle undertone of women are sexual objects, you know, for white men. And white men rule the world. And that's just how it is. And everyone just watches it and thinks it's funny. And it's actually really, really, really terrible. Now, you might say, well, I don't understand how How I Met Your Mother it is racist because they never make any racist comments. Well, it is racist in the fact that the show entirely centers around white people and white people's problems, right? There's no question that everyone on the show is white. Everyone is privileged in some way. None of them seem to worry about money, even though they're living um, in New York and often go through phases of not having employment. Um, they have essentially no friends of color, and the people of color they do interact with are wildly caricatured and stereotyped, um, like the limo driver, Ranjit, right? I mean, he is basically infantilized, which is what um, lots of very dominant male white based shows will do to other races. He's, you know, made funny with his broken English. And of course, he's a limo driver or a cab driver, um, which is, you know, a typical stereotyped profession um, for people of Indian descent. And it's a really, really racist de depiction. You know, the hello. Well, that's really, it's as bad as, um, what's his name? Uh, Abu. Uh, on The Simpsons, you know, the Indian drugstore owner. Um, it's Except in The Simpsons, we're supposed to look at that and see that as a racist caricature. And in How I Met Your Mother, we're supposed to see it as normal. So race is really important in How I Met Your Mother because it is just another example of white, male-dominated culture. This has been the most popular show on television for the past 10 years, it and The Big Bang Theory. And again, The Big Bang Theory centers around what? White males, right? So How I Met Your Mother, white men. Big Bang Theory, white men, okay? And those have been the two most popular traditional sitcoms on the air for the past 10 years. Um, so it's, it's really quite problematic. Uh, it's not that the show isn't funny, it's not that the show isn't enjoyable, but it is very, very, very the epitome of what is kind of wrong with the way we consume popular culture, because the show sort of predetermines that its audience believes that family and monogamy is the most important part of the American dream, that the most important part of the American dream is that you should get married and have children. Um, it absolutely objectifies women and make them, makes them sexual objects. The women don't even really play prominent roles in the show. It's really about Ted, Barney, and Marshall and women in relation to them. Uh, women are sought as prizes um, for sex, and that's about it. Often we see them Lily and Robin are often engaging in really sort of ridiculous, um, typical female behavior, um, which is really insulting and really demeaning. Um, and, you know, they're all white. They all don't need to worry about money. They're all educated. They're all successful. 
and they're all end up seeking monogamy, you know, straight heterosexual monogamy. And that is, has been the most popular, um, show for the past 10 years. And the fact that that's what dominates our popular culture is that that, it assumes its own audience, right? Like, well, its audience is other white straight people, right? But that's the interesting thing about popular culture is popular culture shapes our ideas and how we think and how we feel about things. Um, so as you're watching How I Met Your Mother, um, I didn't really want to get into specific specific episodes because especially in the first season, they're all sort of ridiculous um, and they're all just basically about Ted pursuing a variety of women, Barney having a variety of sexual conquests, Lily and Marshall preparing to get married. Um, you know, there's, there's not a lot of specific things I want to look at because pretty much every show has examples of what I'm talking about, um, about sexism, about white heteronormativity, right? So that's what I want you to think about um, as you answer the questions uh, for this week. Um, okay, so you also have your final paper assignment up. Um, I'm going to send you an email about that as well. Basically, um, if you don't want the paper back, uh, well, basically, I want you to let me know if you want your paper back, because if, if you want it back, I'll make sure to comment on it thoroughly, but otherwise you can just turn it in and expect to not get it back, because it's how you'll get your um, final grade. Uh, okay, well, that's how I met your mother. Again, really think about the relationship between men and women on the show and the relationship pursuant to the American dream and how different um, sexism and racism is and how I met your mother and the office and family guy. Okay, I hope you guys have enjoyed the class. I look forward to reading your final papers and have a great rest of the summer. Bye!